Hi, I'm Marty Kelsey, one of the hosts of STEM in 30, an Emmy-nominated TV show for middle school students produced by the National Air and Space Museum. And we have a great live chat for you today. In just a few minutes, we're going to be heading down to Naval Air Station Pensacola. This is an active flight line. This is where all Navy and Marine aviators get their wings. We're going to be heading down there in a few minutes to talk to a very special group of aviators, the Blue Angels. We'd like to know what questions you have for the Blue Angels. Let us know down in the comments section. Also, let us know where you're watching from. If you've never gotten a chance to see the Blue Angels, you are missing something. And just in case you haven't, check this out. We're going to start the program today with a walk around of the Blue Angels airplane, but we will get to your questions. So let us know what questions you have down in the comments section and let us know where you're watching from. And just a reminder, it might get a little loud today because we are out on an active flight line, but that's going to be kind of awesome. So let's go down to Naval Air Station, Pensacola. Are you all there? Hello. Absolutely. We are here. Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Julius Bratton. Blue Angel number seven, and today I'm gonna to give you guys a little walk around of the F-18, uh, mainly discussing the differences between our current Super Hornet and uh, what's different about what we flew in those videos you just saw, which was our legacy Hornet. Awesome, well, we're ready to walk around, so show us around. Awesome, without any further ado, just looking at the jet behind me, you'll notice that it's larger. You might not be able to see just how big it is in comparison to the Legacy Hornet, but the Super Hornet has a larger Lex, which is a leading edge extension, as well as larger wings. So bigger wing surface area, larger intakes, um, as well as larger stabilators, and uh, it's taller. So the, the Super Hornet is 42 feet wide and 16 feet tall. So we'll start at the front of the jet and work backwards. So one of the things that I noticed when I walk up to the Super Hornet, which behind me is an F-18 Echo Super Hornet, which is a single seat version of the Super Hornet, is that it's just taller. Just like you alluded to, we do have other airplane noise here. It's an active flight line, so I'll wait for that plane to pass. But the Super Hornet's taller, and here I just noticed that when I walk up to it. Working aft, since the jet looks largely the same as the Hornet, I'll discuss some of the differences with our Super Hornets compared to the fleet Super Hornets. So in this, uh, in this bay would be the gun, but in our Super Hornets on the Blue Angels, we don't have a gun. We take out the gun and replace that with a smoke tank. So that allows us to um, have safety of maneuvers uh, as well as look good when we're performing our flight demonstrations. Moving further aft, underneath me is the leading edge extension, and that provides us some, some high angle of attack capability, uh, as well as that extra lift when we are at slow speeds and high angles of attack, and it just extends out even further wide than on the Legacy Hornet. Moving over to the intakes, you notice that the intakes are squared off, whereas on the Legacy Hornet, the intakes were more ovular and rounded. And that allows more airflow. We have larger engines, and each engine produces 42,000 pounds of thrust and full afterburner. Or sorry, the two engines produce a total of 42,000 pounds of thrust and full AB. So these square intakes allow for more air to, to reach the compressor sections, uh, giving us more thrust. Moving to the wing here, Besides the wing just being larger on the Super Hornet, you have a snag here between uh, what is about halfway down the wing, two thirds of the way down the wing. This snag gives us a greater surface area 
of the outboard portion of our wing, as well as increased roll authority in the approach and landing configuration. I'm gonna take you around to the aft portion of the Super Hornet. So from the ground to the top of our vertical stabs is 16 feet. So it's a little bit taller than our Hornet. The Hornet was, I wanna say about 14 feet tall, uh, plus some inches. So when you see this taxing around, you'll notice that it's just higher off the ground as well as taller. And into the aft portion of the Super Hornet, it looks about the same as the Hornet. We've got two uh, afterburning engines, again, producing that 42,000 pounds of thrust total and full AB. That's amazing. And then one of our unique modifications to our Blue Angel Super Hornets is we have our smoke oil that mixes with the left engine's exhaust, and that uh, creates that white plume of smoke behind the jet. With that, I will take us back around to the front of the jet and uh, turn it over to our crew chief. That's awesome. Well, while we're making that handoff, I want to remind everybody to submit your questions down in the comments section. We're going to get to as many of them as we can today. And we will have a little bit of a longer program because in the middle, we're going to uh, uh, transition over from the jet that we're talking about right now over to Fat Albert, the support aircraft C-130. So be sure to stick around at the end of the program for that. Um, but let us know where you're watching from. We've already got a ton of folks watching from all over the country, Ireland uh, and the world, Ireland, France, England, Mexico, Germany, Brazil. We've got California, Oregon, Maryland, Vermont, Michigan, Wisconsin, South Carolina, and Utah, all checking in from the United States. Thank you all so much for watching. We do really appreciate it. And let us know what questions you have as we, as we walk around this airplane. Awesome, so I'll introduce them. The next I'll introduce my crew chief, our number seven crew chief, Staff Sergeant Nate Lyons. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit about what I do to set up for Seven's departure, arrival flights, whatever you have it. Um, we'll start at the nose, just like we did prior. And essentially, I do a pre-flight anytime I walk out to the aircraft. So we do a muscle memory here. What we try to do is maintain the same pattern each time we go out to look at the aircraft. What that allows us is to quickly identify missteps and if anything's different from the last time that we walked out and looked at that aircraft. So we're gonna go on this side of the aircraft, starting with the nose. It's a muscle memory thing. Each time I come out here, I start here and I do the same thing every time. <clears throat> Walking down, I'm going to inspect the antenna both here and here. Unique to this type aircraft with our modifications, we have a look back camera modification directly here. This fairing is specific to Blue Angel aircraft and we use it to give some feedback and some unique B-roll or film for public affairs department and for debrief. Right here we've got some AOAs and some PTOT probes. I'm inspecting those and I'm ensuring that there's nothing wrong. They're not binding, cracked, loose, anything like that. And when I say inspecting, just use those terms from here on out. Looking at the landing gear doors to ensure nothing is separated. Another thing that I'm going to start doing is I'm gonna take out the pins for the aircraft. So I'm gonna go around, there's a pin directly here. I would remove that pin and store it in a certain location. This is the second pin that I would remove. Along this walk, I'm inspecting, looking for similar items. I'm also going to move these chocks. These chocks are also specific. Move it to aft. That's because when Seven and I fly together, we typically don't have a ground crew. So with a ground crew, they would pull those chocks when Seven and I fly and or Seven flies, we don't have that capability. So we remove the chocks to the aft side 
That way he can taxi freely as soon as he gives me the signal. Underneath this side of the wheel well, you're gonna have the APU accumulator. What that allows us to do is it uses pneumatic and hydraulic pressure to slam home, creating turbulence for the APU. With that, that APU comes online and allows us to start both right and left engines respectively. Now with what Seven was alluding to earlier is these flight surfaces are much larger. Another thing specific to this aircraft is the flight surfaces. Give me pause. You, you, you wanna... Looks like we've got a jet getting ready to take off. We've got a little bit of sound there. While we're waiting, I'm gonna give a few more shout outs. We've got uh, Liberty Middle School tuning in along with uh, Luke from Central Florida. We've also got uh, Ackworth, Georgia, Powder Springs, Georgia, Virginia, Chicago, D.C., New Jersey, St. Louis, Missouri, homeschoolers from Alabama, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio. We've got a whole lot of folks tuning in and let us know those questions. We're going to finish this walk up here and walk around here in just a few minutes and we will get to as many of those questions as we can. Looks like we might be able to hear here. These flight again. surfaces are composite in nature. Unlike the Legacy Hornet, the majority of the, the material that the flight surfaces were composed of were metal. With these, they're much larger, but to reduce that weight to thrust ratio that we need to maintain that maximum efficiency, these are composite. So the inspection limitations are much harsher and more strict. With that, I have to pay close attention to all of these specific areas that Seven was mentioning. Coming into this area, this area is a lot easier to actually inspect versus Super and Legacy Hornets. Um, typically, we had a large portion of panels that could be removed in this area. They, they corrected that deficiency and streamlined this entire inspection area, which streamline my process for a pre-flight and also gets seven in the aircraft just a little bit faster. Directly under here you'll see the last pin that I will remove. This goes up to the tail hook. It's a safety pin to prevent this from um, accidentally falling and potentially causing harm to others or aircraft. I will repeat the same method going around to the other side and remove the same pins on the other side as well. That's pretty much a front to aft inspection ratio from myself, Sassar Lines, your number seven crew chief. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I think we're going to go back to, up to Lieutenant Bratton uh, to take a few questions here in just a second. Again, let us know where you're watching from. Hawaii is tuning in, Indiana, Texas, Florida, the Netherlands, Brazil, uh, Qatar, that's a new one for us. Thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. And uh, looks like we're just about ready to go with some questions here. So whenever Lieutenant Bratton is ready to take some questions, we'll be uh, we'll be ready there. Looks like we're getting close. This is the joys of working on an active flight line. Lieutenant Bratton, can you hear me? All righty. I think I can hear you. I'm gonna go to the other side of the, the jet and hopefully it blocks out some of that uh, noise from the T-45s. That sounds good. Uh, so while you walk over there, somebody wants to know how fast are the, do you fly when you're doing the maneuver? So when the, the demonstration pilots were flying, <laughs> it's real hard to get away from the noise. <laughs> when the demonstration pilots were flying, uh, they will fly anywhere as, as slow as um, you know 200 knots on some of their slow speed passes uh, all the way up to the solos executing their sneak maneuver at 0.93 so just under the speed of sound so there's a whole range of uh, air speeds uh, throughout the maneuver package and uh, somebody wants to know how do you decide what maneuvers to do so the maneuvers are, are tried and proven and tested uh, through many years of flight demonstrations uh, with, the, with the Legacy Hornet. So right now at the Super Hornet, we've had a transition team work through all those maneuvers in our standard maneuver package and uh, just see and make sure that they will fit with our new aircraft 
even though it's very similar, there are differences in, in flying characteristics. So right now the team's in winter training, just ironing out all of those differences to make sure that uh, we can perform a safe, uh, consistent, and repeatable flight demonstration in 2021 and beyond. Now, you're not only a pilot, you're also the narrator. Tell us about that job. Absolutely. So uh, you nailed it, pilot as well. Uh, I am the narrator for the flight demonstration. So uh, that means as the team is executing their maneuvers, I'm basically talking through that uh, and, and what the crowd uh, can expect to see and from what direction out in front. So it's very rewarding. It's a unique challenge uh, showing up to the team and, and trying to get the whole narration down and, and accessing that part of uh, my mind that I haven't put to, to test in a, in a long time, haven't memorized uh, just that, that level of, uh, and that amount of uh, narration. Awesome. Uh, we've got another question coming in. Somebody wants to know what your first flight with the Blue Angels was like. So my first flight with the Blue Angels, when we show up as khaki newbies, uh, we still have to maintain some some flight currency. So uh, it's basically you show up to uh, to Pensacola, and I've never flown out of Naval Air Station Pensacola before. Um, so uh, just kind of get a quick lay of the land, course rules, all that stuff, and like, hey, here's a jet, uh, here's a piece of paper with the course rules to get out to the working area, and uh, go get some flight time and, and bring it back in a blue jet. Uh, the most notable difference is you just feel almost naked walking out to the jet. Uh, we don't have flight gear. We're not walking with a, a knee board and a helmet bag that we're used to. Uh, we're just walking in our show suit, just like I'm dressed right now, uh, to the jet and hopping in, strapping into the flight gear that's already in the seat. So uh, very unique experience for sure. Talk to us about your experience before becoming a Blue Angel. You were an, an active... Uh, pilot, tell us tell us about that. Absolutely. Before uh, becoming a Blue Angel, uh, I was a you know standard strike fighter aviator. Um, directly before coming here, I was an instructor pilot at VFA 106 in Oceana, Virginia, or at NES Oceana uh, in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And before that, my fleet squadron was at VFA 86 in Lemoore, California. All right, we've got uh, uh, somebody wants to know why use a larger jet? They thought smaller jets would be better for maneuvers. You know, that's probably true, um, but the Super Hornet allows us to uh, spend less time on maintenance and have more parts uh, that it just aligns with our current fleet uh, right now. So we have. We're in the process, and by we, the Navy is in the process of retiring the, the Legacy Hornets. So uh, by flying those, uh, or by flying the Super Hornet, hopefully reduce the maintenance man hours uh, and streamline uh, just you know having parts and, and uh, being a more accurate uh, reflection of the fleet aircraft. We've got somebody watching from Pensacola, and they say, you guys practice over their house all the time. Do you ever get sick of practicing so much? You know, it's uh, it's practice that that allows us to perform these demonstrations with confidence and uh, with the margins of safety that are required. Uh, so, even if you get sick of it, it's one of those things you, you, you got to do, uh, and you have to do it often in order to to maintain that proficiency and currency. Not only flying the jet, but also withstanding the G forces uh, and, and the whole dynamic environment that is uh, flying in a flight demonstration. So, uh, we love it. We embrace it. Now, for those of you that may just be tuning in, we are on an active flight line right now. Um, Lieutenant Bratton, can you tell us what's going on around? Did we hear some noise? Yep, so on the flight line, we've got jets turning. Uh, so we just had a, a T-45 taxi out from their line, uh, getting ready to execute a flight. So in, in short order, you'll hear them take off and it'll be quite loud. Uh, we also had a T-6 pull out of the line here not too long ago, uh, as well as T-6's landing. So. Uh, and then we also are continuing with the wind noise coming, uh, you know, from I think the the south. But uh, <laughs> it's it's all it's all good fun. Uh, if there aren't any more questions, just to kind of keep us on timeline, because we do have our C-130 pilot, I'd like to take you to the to the cockpit and show you some of the differences in the jet uh, that you would never really see um, unless we do it here. That sounds amazing. Please, please take us away. We will follow along. Awesome. I'll uh, rotate the camera around and climb up the jet and we'll do it. 
Sounds good. While he does that, uh, I want to make sure that, uh, oh, it turns out my mom's watching. So, hi, mom. Thanks for tuning in. We've also got uh, Peru, Tennessee, Arizona, West Virginia, Iowa, Massachusetts, Kentucky, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Iowa, Surprise, Arizona, the spring training home of the Royals, uh, second graders at Our Lady of Hope St. Luke School, uh, New York, Annapolis, Wisconsin, Pensacola Beach, Delaware, New Mexico, South Carolina, and Luke wants to be a Blue Angels pilot when he grows up. Luke, we will ask about that here in just a minute. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. And now let's take a look in this cockpit. I'm excited about this. It is front facing for you. Awesome. All right, so I am going to turn the camera away from me and start talking about some unique Blue Angel modifications. And first and foremost, since it's right in front of us, hopefully you guys can hear me all right, try and block the wind there. Yeah, you're right great. Right in front of us, one of the first modifications are we have a stop rock, stopwatch. So that stopwatch allows the solos to execute their timing pattern and hit center point at the same time, as well as for our uh, the whole Delta, if they're doing any crossing maneuvers, they do all those on outbound uh, checkpoints and they hit those checkpoints at the same time. Uh, so that clock helps us have center point hits and cross at the right place over the field. All right, also notable on the jet, which is a modification, are these lights right here. These lights indicate whether our boost pumps are working properly, so the top two lights uh, indicate that we have good high pressure in our boost pumps. The bottom left two uh, would indicate if we had a low pressure sensing and then the right two are our inverted pumps. So when the, the demonstration pilots fly inverted and they have the inverted pumps on, uh, they should see two amber lights there. Over here to the left, this is our inverted pump switch. So they'll flip that up and turn the inverted pumps on. And then to the left of the inverted pump switch, you have our, our smoke pressure arming switch, uh, as well as an indicator showing that the smoke is on. Here on the throttle, this switch right here is what uh, controls smoke on and smoke off. So an aft actuation, smoke on, and then forward actuation, smoke off. Unique to the Super Hornet is this upfront control display. So it's a digital uh, display and then our engine and fuel display here, uh, which is also digital. The rest of the cockpit looks largely the same as our Hornet, and uh, I'm gonna keep us moving for time uh, so that you guys can also get a chance to uh, see the C-130J Super Hercules, which is gonna be new for our uh, demonstration next year. Uh, I am going to hand the camera back off to our public affairs rep, Cody, and uh, we'll, we'll keep it moving. That sounds good. All right, we've got uh, New Jersey checking in along with North Carolina, Ohio, homeschoolers in Virginia Beach. We've got Germany, Ireland, Wisconsin, and more homeschoolers near Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, for any teachers out there, thank you as well for all that you're doing, inspiring that next generation of explorers. Um, and hopefully you're enjoying this show today. I know that I am because I've never gotten to see inside the cockpit of a Blue Angel airplane before. So uh, really awesome stuff. And uh, we should be going back to them here in just a second. And once we get back to them, and it looks like we're walking over towards uh, the C-130. Um, so while we're walking over there, we do want to let everybody know that we just got a new airplane into the collection of the National Air and Space Museum. As a matter of fact, the blue paint scheme on it might look a little bit familiar. Check this out. We are now in the process of divesting and getting rid of all of our legacy F-18s uh, and moving to the newer aircraft. Our charter is to motivate and inspire the youth of America and try to showcase the pride and professionalism of the Navy and the Marine Corps so that we can share what the men and women are doing overseas with people all over America.
Well, I mean, it's a great, unique opportunity that we really wanted to take advantage of. Not only do we have a, an aircraft that flew for over 10 years with the Blue Angels, uh, but it also had a wartime record. The Blue Angels are obviously significant. They're the, the Navy's premier flight demonstration team. So having an airplane in Blue Angels colors is, is uh, really exciting to have here in the museum. Blue Angels is the face of naval aviation for much of America. This aircraft went on to serve as a Blue Angel, and we're convinced that our visitors and guests that come here to the museum will see this and uh, think of it as one of the highlights of their visit. I personally think it's a fitting tribute, but it's really exceptional to get to fly it to, of all places, the Smithsonian. We are um, honored and do feel very lucky to have this be its final spot, um, and I think it's fitting for the aircraft. I got a chance to be at the museum the day that that airplane arrived, and that was absolutely amazing. Well, here in just a second, we're going to be joined by Captain William Huckabee from the United States Marines, who is one of the pilots of the C-130 known as Fat Albert. Uh, Captain Huckabee, are you there? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I am Captain William Huckabee, one of the C-130 flight demonstration pilots here with the Blue Angels. Today we have a very unique opportunity to take a look at our new Super Hercules, the C-130J, actually known as Fat Albert. So today I'd like to give you a little behind the scenes look at the C-130. It's a new asset that we picked up this summer in July and we couldn't be uh, more happier to have this on our line. And I'll get to show you uh, one of our primary missions with the C-130J that we use here on the Blue Angels. So starting off behind me, you'll see Fat Albert. It is a four engine, six bladed prop, cargo transport aircraft, modeled after the C-130J that we fly in the fleet with the Marine Corps. Now, interesting enough, we're an all Marine crew with flight engineers and pilots, loadmasters here on the C-130. So each and every show site that we go to starts with a big muscle movement. That muscle movement starts with loading all of our gear and personnel onto Fat Albert so that we can get to the show safely and on time. Today, we are doing a load X rehearsal. So we're essentially rehearsing what we'll be doing for the 2021 show season. As you can see behind me and over here to my left, we've got some of the pallets and some of the gear that we'll be throwing on the C-130 today. So what we're looking for each and every show site is enough people and supplies in order to execute a three to four day air show. So what that means is six pallets, Lima pallets of about 25,000 pounds, plus anywhere around 40 personnel. All those personnel, as you saw with the Super Hornets, will be there to turn the jets and get the jets ready for each flight demonstration. Now as a secondary mission of Fat Albert, we also get a unique opportunity to showcase some of the best uh, maneuvers that the C-130 can do, some of the combat maneuvers. So through that, we have a short demonstration, about 10 minutes, where the jets are about 45 minutes, where we get to show the max capabilities of a C-130. Now, interesting enough, the C-130 is the longest and one of the longest military continuously made aircraft. This aircraft has been with Blue Angels, not this specifically, but the C-130 has been with us for 50 years. We're coming up on our 75th anniversary. And honestly, with Fat Albert in the mix, we can do a lot of good on the logistical realm of things. Uh, to include not only getting the team to where they need to be, 
but also if we need to uh, go pick up additional personnel or any parts, uh, we can use Fat Albert to do that uh, from each show and come back here to Pensacola. Now at this time, I'd like to head on up to the cockpit or the flight deck and show you guys around. That sounds great. We'll follow along. While they're going up to the cockpit, I'll do a few more shout outs. Texas, Arizona, Fairbanks, Alaska, Maryland, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, and Brazil. And uh, we'll pop back into the cockpit here and see what's going on and uh, get a chance to take a look. Rocket. All right, welcome back. So we're up here on the flight deck. As you can see, there are uh, quite a few switches uh, in the C-130. However, we use something we like to call triggers or flows. So we can figure out where everything is, make sure every switch is in the right place. We utilize our flight engineers for flight demonstrations to make sure everything is set up so that when the pilots get up here, we can simply start the engines and then execute our flight demonstration. You'll also notice we have uh, what look like iPads, which is all digital displays. So we are able to essentially use all the different buttons uh, to program our flight plans and to know where we're going for navigation. Now, at this time, I'd like to uh, head back outside for a little bit of Q&A. That sounds great. We've got just a few more minutes left. So if you've got a question, go ahead and put it down in the comments section and uh, we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, we've got Seattle turning in, tuning in, as well as the Smithsonian affiliate, Oklahoma's History Center. Thank you all for watching. Um, we've got some great questions. I don't know that we're going to be able to get to all of them, but we're going get, to get to as many of them as we possibly can. Uh, and we'll go back over to uh, Captain Huckaba here in just a second. All right, there we are. You ready for some questions, Captain Huckaba? Absolutely. Send them my way. And hey, just uh, we're going to stay inside. It's a little bit quieter in here. And uh, hopefully I can uh, answer all of your questions. That sounds great. Uh, somebody wanted to know about the cadence during maneuvers. And I've seen some video of, the, of Fat Albert flying. Can you talk us through what that maybe sounds like? Yes, absolutely. So and for each maneuver, uh, there is a specific cadence. So for the jet demonstration pilots, that's going to be off boss's call. Every time that he's making a, a cadence or a clear call, it's or in order for all the wingmen to understand where he's about to go with his jet so they can smoothly and seamlessly with precision follow him along throughout the entire demo. All right, we've got somebody that wants to know if you have any female pilots or any female crew members. Currently here on Fat Albert, uh, we have a crew of eight. So we have three pilots and we have five flight engineers. We do not have any female pilots on our crew or any air crew at this time, uh, but we have over 22 females on our team uh, to include our public affairs officer. Uh, we also have a supply officer and a flight dock, as well as Blue Angel number eight. And uh, you talked about the maneuvers. What's the most difficult maneuver that you get to fly uh, in the C-130? So in the C-130, I think uh, one of the most difficult maneuvers uh, to fly for us is the parade pass. Uh, for such a big wing aircraft to be at 200 feet over the ground, making a 60 degree turn seamlessly over center point and making sure that we uh, kind of banana arc outside of the crowd and then be a very crisp back to uh, snap the wings level and then to climb away. Uh, it takes a lot of finesse, takes a lot of practice uh, and a lot of hard work. But one of the unique things we have in the C-130 demonstration is we have two pilots where the left seat pilot will be flying the demonstration and the right seat pilot will be maneuvering the power levers in order to get you on speed uh, and keep you at a good altitude and energy level, as well as, like you said, the cadence, calling out our climbs and ascents and our turns. So that really backs us up in the left seat as we fly the flight demonstration. All right, we've got a lot of folks asking about what does it take to become a Blue Angel? Like, what was your path to becoming a Blue Angel? Well, interesting enough, uh, just naval aviation in general for me uh, started out with a love and a passion for math and science. So I think it's a unique opportunity today to be talking with everyone here with the Smithsonian. You know, that's where I kind of learned about engineering uh, through an engineering academy at my local high school uh, and middle school. And then from there, I went on uh, to the Naval Academy where I studied aerospace engineering. Uh, from there, I was able to commission into the Marine Corps as a pilot. Now, what's unique about uh, most Blue Angels here is that we come from the fleet and that we will go back to the fleet. 
So for me, that meant flying C-130s off the East Coast in North Carolina. Uh, had an opportunity to do a couple of deployments in Europe and uh, Africa. All right, we've got a couple of folks asking about uh, JADO, and are you ever going to get a chance to do that again? So JADO, no, that is the Genesis to Takeoff. Uh, BERT had its last blast back in 2009 in November. That was uh, with the C-130T. So a couple of the differences uh, from that model to the C-130J is a little bit of uh, what we were talking about in the cockpit. So the all-glass cockpit, as well as the six-bladed prop and newer engines. Now with the engines combined with the props, we actually have the same amount of thrust and horsepower that we would with those JADO bottle rockets. So the C-130J is not equipped for JADO. Uh, we have no plans to go back to that. And we will continue to execute all of our maneuvers. And it uh, from the from the crowd line, it almost looks like the exact same maneuver, except there's no fireworks in the back. <laughs> uh, what is the the C-130's mission? Not when with the Blue Angels, so uh, it, just in active service. What's the role of the C-130 there? Yeah, so our our role uh, there in the Marine Corps with the gray C-130s that we uh, that I flew. Uh, and I'll go back to flying in the future, is really to uh, be a cargo transport, so a logistic, logistical platform, as well as an air-to-air -air refueling platform, so a tanker, where we give off gas to both helicopters and jets and tilt rotor aircraft uh, that are getting to and from their objective areas. What is your favorite part of being with the Blue Angels? So my... Uh, Probably the best part, what I get fired up the most, is to be able to talk about naval aviation, talk about C-130s, and really get to have some of that uh, community outreach uh, with everyone. Uh, this past week, we had an opportunity to deliver some toys uh, to Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, a, a unique opportunity that, that we felt uh, was, was awesome for us to, to, to lend help to uh, some of the communities, and really just uh, all the adventures, opportunities, and challenges that come with naval aviation. Uh, every day is a new day. Uh, we respect the business that we're in. There's obviously some inherent risk in flying, but honestly, uh, being able to get out there, interact with the public uh, when it's safe to do so, that's uh, some of the moments I cherish most uh, being on the Blue Angels. Awesome. Well, we're just about out of time, but I've got one more question for you. We've got a bunch of students watching from all across the country and truly across the world. What advice would you give to them if they want to come join you as a member of the Blue Angels? Honestly, it comes down to a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication and setting those goals for yourselves. You know, when I was in your shoes uh, back in probably middle school, high school, I was trying to take every opportunity I could to challenge myself, whether it was in extracurricular activities, sports, uh, math team, anything that I could, because I knew that the hard work and dedication was going to build the discipline, which was really going to be that bedrock so that I could kind of position myself uh, to challenge myself to find new ways and new heights. Well, Captain Huckabee, thank you so much for talking with us today and thank the rest of your team for joining us as well. We really appreciated it. Uh, getting a chance to see inside the airplanes has been absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Well, hey, we appreciate the time. Thanks again. And if you guys want to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please do. And you guys have a happy holiday season. You guys do the same, and I want to remind all of our viewers watching that you can uh, not only follow the Blue Angels on social media, but be sure to give Tim and 30 a follow on Facebook and Twitter. Um, subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum YouTube channel. We just posted uh, at the beginning of the month a week ago uh, our latest episode all about naval aviation. Beth and I actually got a chance to launch and land on an aircraft carrier. It was absolutely amazing. You'll have to watch the video to see which one of us did the most screaming. Um, and also we want to encourage everybody to tune in next week. We'll be looking at the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, that's going to be a really cool event happening on the 21st of December. But next week we're going to be talking about it uh, to get you all ready for that. And then in January, we will have a brand new episode of STEM and 30, all about communication for National History Day. I saw the first draft of it today and it looks really fun. Uh, and we'll also be having some live chats following that up. Um, I'd like to give a huge thanks to the Blue Angels for all that they do to inspire uh, students and, and everyone at their air shows. Um, and to all of our service members, we appreciate everything that you all do. And for all of you that turn, tuned in today, thank you so much for watching.
Take care.